Hi everyone, it's Erin Scott here. Welcome to your October 2019 Alchemy Scope. Let's take a look at your growth processes, your natural growth processes for this Libra new moon cycle, which is correlating with our month of October through three different modalities, an art channeling, a divinatory message, and an analysis of your astrological cycle. Leo, welcome to your October Alchemy Scope. So let's start diving into your three-part kind of analysis by looking at the speeded up version of your art channeling that came through for you. Now, you can see already, I'm starting with pen. Leo is underlined with a line with two lines, like hashtags going through the underline. You can see clearly there's a heart forming. A heart with the bottom of it separated okay then there's a horizontal line kind of coming through the bottom of the heart here and then there's a formation of what you will see is is steps stairs okay and i haven't counted these yet so we have essentially one two three four there's four stairs and then it's leading up to what you're going to see here is the development of a platform. Four stairs leading to the top, top uh, layer or level. And now you can see there's the, these kind of circular formations. Now, first of all, the Leo drawing really started with pen. <laughs> so we're going to bring in some pastels for color. That's happening now. But a lot of yours was essentially all of the foundations were were drawn out. Not not always is that the case. So we see here like from the top layer or level, we have the stairs leading up to a stone path, right? And these are natural stones, right? Different colors, gray, sepia, tan, leading up leading up to some pathway ahead, in the future, in the distance, etc. And you can see there's a lot of contemplating with this particular drawing as it was coming through. Now, at the bottom of the heart, you can see kind of these a DNA strand that's developing here, okay? By the way, this has not been analyzed yet. We're doing it now. You know, I let the channeling come through. I set it aside, and then when I'm doing the art channeling, that's when... Uh, or when we do the audio, that's when I'm doing the analysis with you. Now, here on the right side of the heart, yin-yang. The yin-yang symbol is coming up here, okay? Right side of the heart. So we're going to look at all of these elements to see what they're, what they're meaning. And you can see here that there's purple. So on the left side of the heart, there's these purple strands emanating out we have what one two three four five and then it's coming around so now the purple is wrapping around that yin yang on the right side of the heart And then there's almost like a root system down below that's linking down to that DNA strand. Do you see that? So, Leo, there was a lot of contemplation. There was something else wanting to come through here, but I needed to tap into it to really place it. Ultimately, it came through, but it took a little while. So up at the top of the steps and then up at the top of this kind of stone path that's, you know, developing in the distance here, we have this figure that's emerging, okay? We have this figure that, that got drawn out here. And uh, this figure is um, his, or, his, his or her, it was not defined if it was a man or a female. This is just a figure. This is an entity. It's a, it's a person. But this person is arched backward, chest exposed, and uh, yellow light, okay, emanating out from the chest cavity. There's a release here that we're tapping into, okay? Now, additionally, what's coming here is this kind of, again, almost like a yin-yang figure, but not quite. 
but in the stairs, so one, two, three, between the third and the fourth stair or step, there is a circle that is half shadowed, half black, half white. One is on the front panel of the fourth stair and the open uh, section or half of the circle is on the platform of the third stair. What does that mean? Who knows? We don't know yet. We're going to be, we're going to be talking about it. So now let's take a look. We're going to look at this. Um, we're going to look at the stilled drawing here of the artwork. Let me take a little sip of my drink here. Okay, Leo. So let's talk about this one by one. Now, the very first thing that came off Again, these are fast, intuitive hits. I go into these very, very rapidly anymore. These drawings used to take me much longer years ago, but now they're just rapid. They just come right through. So with Leo, the underline of the O, so there was a line that came from the O of Leo, and it wrapped around underlined Leo, and there's a hashtag, two lines. Now, I can tell you, especially after looking at the entirety of the drawing, this month specifically for Leos is very much wrapped up with the narrative of relationships, more so maybe than other signs. I haven't finished recording the audios for the other signs, but for Leo, the month of October, there will be relationship dynamics that come up to the forefront for you, okay? For a lot of you, this has to do with releasing a past love or releasing a past tie to a relationship that's keeping you enslaved, enslaved to the non-present moment, okay? So let's talk about that. So the two hashtags, relationships are up for you this month. And because we're moving into from the Libra cycle and later in October into the Scorpio cycle, this is a deep dive month. And indeed, a lot of the dynamics that are activated for the Libra focus narrative, which we're going to talk about upcoming in your astrological segment, there's a lot of deep processes that are happening for all of the signs this month, but including Leo, okay? Now, the second thing that came through for you was this heart, okay? Immediately after the two hashtag lines was this heart. Now, the bottom of the heart was not connected. It was separated. Ultimately, it became separated by a DNA strand. Now, there's a couple of things here. One, the right side of the heart is larger than the left. The right side of the physical body Okay, because we're looking at this symbolically, certainly the heart is symbolic, but I'm also looking at it symbolically as it relates to our physicality. Okay, so the physicality of the, um, the right side of the heart, that is linked to, now actually, okay, <laughs> this is the thing. So we're looking at the image, right? And when we're looking at the image, we're talking about the larger right side, okay? The right side is linked to the left brain. The left brain is the analytic brain. It is the uh, partitioned, reduced, focused, linear, short view, product-oriented brain. It's about numbers and analysis and identifications. That is the left brain. The interesting thing, dear Leo, is that the right side of your heart connected to the left brain processing is very much maybe analyzing a relationship, thinking about this relationship, spinning perhaps, dissecting details, dear Leo, about a relationship, a relationship of meaning. And by the way, I have to tell you, I don't think for all of you this has to do with one particular relationship. For some of you out there, this has to do with relationship patterns, okay? For some of you, it is going to have to do specifically with a particular individual that it's time for a transition to happen here, okay? Now, spinning about the yin-yang, as within, so without. Let's talk about the yin-yang symbol. This is uh, as within, so without. That's exactly what the symbol is, okay? 
the white dot in the middle of the black, the black dot in the middle of the white. It's the polarity of reality and the seed of the other inside the one. That's just how life works. It's always that way. That's how life works. It's, it's how the psyche works. It's how the consciousness field works as within, so without. So um, this has to do with uh, needing to maybe understand how the individual, let's say that some of you are tied to, let's say memories are very active for you or something, and you're thinking a lot about them, or you're analyzing the dynamics of the relationship. For you this month, it might be in this October timeframe, because there is kind of this process of depth and psychological investigation that's just astrologically activated for this month, it could very well be that some of you are actually starting to recognize how the person that you are looking outside of yourself at, so the loved one, the spouse, the partner, the one who you divorced, the one who died, etc., that you're starting to understand that they were always a reflection of you. And maybe you're starting to understand that you you never lose the person or the relationship. It's always there. It's always alive in your consciousness field. This whole game is consciousness anyway. It's very important that you get that. So some of you are connecting to that reality this month. I have to say, why? Well, because of this of the purple um, threads that came out of the right side, okay? Or excuse me, the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart is the right brain. And these purple threads, kind of these free expressions that are tendrilling out from that heart, this is flow. This is spiritual flow, purple lines coming out from that left side, which is the right brain. The right brain is the holistically seen brain, the brain that can tap into uh, the web of reality, to stories, to archetypes, to symbols, to emotions. It taps to the intuitive knowing centers. That's the right brain. And the right brain is connecting you to a bigger, larger reality. And if you notice, those purple threads came out first, and then it went back and it wrapped around the left brain's yin-yang relationship spinning narrative. Do you understand? So there is some sort of a flow that gets activated, at least for some of you, some of you that are awake and participating in your evolutionary process. You're curious about your natal blueprint. Connect in for an in-depth natal analysis for those of you who still don't know what your distinct blueprint is, the distinct patterns that are encoded, the distinct story for your mastery and your evolutionary arcs, it's foundational. It's a foundational tool. And so all of your relationship narratives are in there. All of your personal growth and existing pattern narratives are in there. Everything is. Your career is in there. Your past lives are in there. Everything's in there. But the thing is, those threads that started to, let's say, get expressed or flow, there's a spiritual flow that the right brain is letting you access. Well, guess what? It goes back and it wraps around that left brain story of the relationship. Beautiful that. And then, and then there's roots, purple roots that get kind of activated at the bottom of that wrapped purple down into the source of this DNA strand. How amazing is that? The DNA strand for me, Leo, is representing uh, your foundations, your roots, your inherent soul structure story, the story, and the thing that is maybe keeping you bound. Because, you know, we all know that Leo ruled by the sun and rules the fifth house, governs the fifth house, is about the individuated self, the pure self. It rules children and play and love. 
Certainly it rules freedom and entrepreneurship and creative expression, leadership and confidence, all of these aspects. But here, this kind of structural element at the base of the love story, love is indeed something that Leo rules, fifth house rules. So the DNA that is governing your love story, how you relate to people in general and those patterns, how you relate to the, even for some of you, obsessive compulsive love relationships. Listen, we have planets that are moving into Scorpio this month that are creating an intense plutonic uh, driver for where the mind is focusing this month. So for you, love and relationships, sexuality and binding and merging and you being reflected in the eyes of another, all of that stuff is up for you this month, Leo. This is a big month. Now, stairs. <laughs> now, the stairs emerged from the middle of the page downward. What that tells me is that the beginning of the month, I believe that you are going to be going on a down into the basement, down into your soul structure, down into your unconscious layers. You're going to go down and you're going to seek what's down there. Because the, st the stairs remained clear, I think that you're going to, in your consciousness, go down deep, deep within yourself. Now, uh, at the top, and then I think mid-month, what's going to happen is there's a new organic process of enlightening, a new organic, these are the stones of the earth, diverse stones, natural structures, spheres, little holons, Leo, little holons. These are circular patterns here. The stairs are hard and angled, rectangular, etc. These are wood structures. These are more hard and angled, more right angled. This is in fact more left-brained. Okay, up at the top, I think mid month, okay, probably around the full moon, actually, I believe that you're going something's going to get activated where you move into more of a uh, right brain narrative, right brained orientation, you're able to see things more holistically, understand things from a broader perspective, more of a connected perspective, understanding the web of life and the web of your own life the circumstances within your life, the people within your life, the relational dynamics, what it's shown you, what it's reflected to you. But what I get here, Leo, is that this stone path is leading up, up. It's certainly leading out into the distance. And what I get is that there is some transmutation process that occurs for you this month. Could it be that it's initiation point of a paradigm shifting process for you? Possibly. Because this point where the horizon line, where the steps move into the stones, that midpoint, it bisects that the bottom of the heart, right? So there's something that is impacting your love stories, how you hold love in your psyche, how you process love, how you are how you relate to people and how you hold the belief systems and your constructs of reality with regards to issues about love, right? So for you, you are altering your relationship to love, hopefully becoming more organically connected to the truth, to the natural truth. Ultimately, this figure that is on a back bend, he's opened up, I say he, but this is an individual, this is a human who is opened up, arms extended, heart released. There is light coming up and out through you as a vehicle, Leo. Something gets broken open. You are, and I'm going to say freed, but listen, you, we all still have our issues. We're working our issues, you know, until we die, really. But is there a level of freedom that you're accessing, that you're catalyzing, that is, is being processed for you naturally over the course of this evolutionary journey of October 2019 for you? Yes, yeah, something is being opened. There's something helping to free you, but you must be awake to it and you must participate in it. You must be willing to participate in it. This is not happening to you. This is happening and you can either participate or not. That, my dear Leo, is your free will choice. You can either 
choose to participate in the energetics that are helping naturally over the course of now to open you up, to free you up, to de-enslave you or not. That, my darling, is your free will choice. That's where free will comes into play. But there's an opportunity for a lot of you to get yourself free, to get yourself released, and to get yourself into a truth orientation with regards to all relationships are a mirror of you. Applying too much um, uh, idealization to another person, I'm sorry, that's imbalanced and it's not natural. It, it You have to understand that everyone deserves your love and value, I guess. I mean, that's a deeper conversation, but people deserve you to see them and to recognize them through your eyes and you are to recognize that they are you. And when you are triggered by another, even if it's exceedingly strong love feelings, you must understand that they are representing a shadow aspect of you that is to be recognized within yourself. Any extreme feeling, whether it's anger and hatred or fear or love and admiration, you must understand all of that is a shadow aspect of you. So maybe some of you this month are starting to recognize that. Now, the interesting thing is this image ends with this circle, half white, half black, right? Shadow and light. And it's on the platform of the third stair and the front face of the fourth stair. <sighs> what is that? Well, the, the platform of the stair is what you step on to get you up. The shadow is what you see as you're going up. Okay, Leo? The shadow here is what you're seeing as you're going up up, as you're elevating, as you're up leveling, as you are maturing, as you are evolving. It's important for you to see the shadow. Understand that um, it's not just what you see, meaning that what you're stepping on on the platform of that step is the quote unquote light or, or expressed side of that circle. The black side on the front facing of that fourth stair is the shadow. The irony is you see, you see the shadow when you're going up the stairs. You see the light as you're going down the stairs. Do you understand? You only see one side as you're going up or down. The view that we have right here on this artwork is we're able to see both because we're looking kind of midpoint. So we're looking at the kind of the front of the stairs, but we're able to see at the top of the of the stair. This might be beyond some of your interest level, but I have to tell you this is interesting because what it indicates is that it takes you going up and down, evolving and going within, moving upward and having externalized action in this world and doing inward reflection. I hope that makes sense, Leo, because what this indicates is wholeness is in your um, wheelhouse, naturally, because it's in all of our wheelhouses, wholeness, your wholeness. But the other thing is, it takes you to evolve and go deep. It takes you to take action going forward and participating in your own evolution going up the stairs. And it takes also going down the stairs and going deeper within your own internalized process. Both and, inner and outer, yin and yang, self and other. You are them. And the whole process of your evolutionary growth is about evolution, going up those stairs, and uh, inward reflection, going down those stairs, into your process, into your reality, into the roots of your DNA strands, of your soul structure, of your emotional foundations. This is very significant, Leo. It's, a, it's an important month for you. 
Okay, beauties. Now, let's take a look at the divinatory messages that came through for you. You received two this month. There were two cards that came for you. Um, beautiful day out, Halloween decorations up. Now, let's take a look at the guidance that came through for you. One of the cards that came through is loop of productivity, focus on work. The other one is Mercury, communicate your message. Both of these are your evolutionary points of focus this month, meaning work on these. This is your guidance. This is what you need to work on in order to really um, get to where you want to go, get to that place of least effort, get to that place of optimal, maximal growth and evolution. So loop of productivity, this is your... Um, reflection for this month of October. Focus is important. By limiting distractions, we can perform our tasks better and easier. Focus will help when we have so many things to do and don't know where to start. Attack one task on its own by limiting the view of how much needs to get done. Be persistent and avoid useless distractions. Make steady progress. Before you know it, the work will be completed. Now, interestingly, you also have Mercury here, which is, of course, all about the mind. Let me pull up the Mercury page here. There's actually a few Mercury cards in this deck. We're going to go to the Mercury card here, which is communicate your message, okay? So the reflection for you this month is this. In addition to loop of productivity, you also have Mercury. Good communication is an art form. To throw a can of paint on the ground is to make a mess. To use the right colors with a proper brush and canvas is to bring joy to others. Understand your message needs to be heard and bring it to your audience with style, flair, and tact. Who is your audience? By sharing your message with the right audience, it will be received with interest. Remember that if you are curious about something, others will be too. So the productivity message is about focus. Mercury is about sharing your message. So it's a beautiful and perfect uh, combination of growth messages for you this month. Okay. All right, lovelies. Now let's take a look at your astrology. We're just going to talk a few minutes about some of your key aspects. Now, what we're looking at with this chart here is the Libra new moon chart with Aries at the ascendant. So it's a generalized chart, whole sign that we're looking at for the new moon cycle for October, because this is the main narrative of growth that's governing and driving the energetics of this month. Now, Leo, for you, the new moon in Libra happened in your third house. This was a five degree sun moon conjunction. Sun is the outer self, and of course it's your ruler. Moon is your inner self. So outer and inner coming together every month at a new moon. And this particular one happened at five degrees. Five indicates change, chaos, movement, creativity, freedom, okay? All of those things. Creativity is also there if I didn't mention that. So we have this kind of changing dynamics that are happening with regards to what Libra and for you with regards to what third house so this Sun Moon conjunction at five degrees is about you evolving you becoming a new okay and working with the theme of your alignment your new alignment with regards to relationships how do you deal with people how do you understand people how do you, what are the dynamics of your relationships? What are the patterns of your relationships? Again, this is all uh, tapped into and seen clearly with an in-depth natal analysis, which for those interested, you can find all those links below, by the way, okay? Now, that's because this new moon is in Libra. So we're talking about fairness, justice, harmony, and dynamic equilibrium with people with relationships, with you and the other, okay? That's what we're talking about here. But in addition to that, this new moon is happening in your archetypal third house. Third house is the mind. It is your thoughts. It is your thinking. It is where you focus your thoughts and mind, okay? But it's also your communications. So there's something here too about new, a new way of communicating 
in maybe a new independent way. Five, freedom, independence, creativity, movement, etc. Okay, so five could be this new independent and free way of thinking and speaking and honoring yourself as you have your dynamical uh, relationship with another, whoever it might be. Okay, so this is about almost just honoring yourself newly and holding your space, for example, and not necessarily giving all your power away to the other. This is about treating people fairly and treating yourself fairly, loving yourself in the relationship. Does that make sense? So that's what's here. Now, at this new moon point, we also had Venus and Mercury also in Libra. Now, as of the time that I'm doing this audio recording for you, Mercury has moved into Scorpio. Okay, so for you, Mercury will be moving into your fourth house. And actually this week, so the second week in, in October, essentially, Venus will also be moving into your fourth house in Scorpio. So there's in this intensification of your focus and the intensification of your value system and how you are feeling and thinking and focusing on issues of love and relationships. But this is about a deeper dive inherently, Leo, because we're talking, this is your fourth house, archetypally, okay? Your particular blueprint, by the way, is different. You're gonna have something very specific depending on your exact birth time, right? But archetypally, indeed, this is the activation for you. So there's a deep dive into your emotional root system. This is your IC in fourth house. Mercury, Venus moving into Scorpio, fourth house. Your roots, your foundations, okay? Now, the other thing that we have going on here, there's a couple things. One, the main kind of areas that are being affected for you in the month of October is third house, new identity, new changing and free identity, as it relates to the sixth house, Capricorn, Pluto, Saturn, South Node. This is your house of work. And because the third house is the mind and your communications, I do think that a lot of you are going to have some tensions arise with regards to communications, um, but not, I mean, there, there, there are intensities this month of October, astrologically, um, and I'll move into more of those details in another video, but indeed, the square formation between third house and sixth house can look like there's some contention with communications with regards to cohorts, workmates, teammates, bosses, employees, etc. Okay. Now, um, the other thing is that there is a quincunx relationship between the sun moon at five degrees Libra and 10th house. Taurus, Uranus at five degrees. That quincunx is indicating that indeed there's an uncomfortable relationship with career changes. So there's something about you having to be malleable, changing, moving, adjustable, going with the flow with regards to work constraints. Sixth house, Pluto, Saturn, South node. So constraints with work, maybe constraints with your voice, with your power, with how people are receiving you, etc. And with regards to that quincunx relationship to Uranus in the 10th house of career and your aspirations. So there's a little bit of um, discomfort with regards to work and career, all right? Specifically when it has to do with a new way of thinking that you're developing, okay and a new depth that you're coming into do you understand there's a new way that you're relating to yourself that you're understanding yourself you are changing and this is impacting work and career okay now in addition to that we also have indeed again if we're looking at the energetics and the signature of october mars was in virgo at this point and for you this is archetypal second house opposing Neptune in the eighth, and both of those are squaring Jupiter Sagittarius fifth house. So there is more of a drive for you, Virgo second house Mars, to move and take action with regards to 
new learnings, uh, because the fifth house can talk about education as well, you know, being curious and seeking new experiences, new learnings, especially with Jupiter there. So there's almost new learnings, new teachings, new experiences, new creative explorations as well. So there's a narrative of this month, well, there's some dissonance happening with work and career, you're also quite driven to explore your own creative explorations and indeed possibly new entrepreneurial pursuits, okay? Let's see what else. What's the other thing that I wanted to talk about? The other thing that I'll say is that that sun moon in Libra was opposed Chiron in Aries. And in here, and your Aries Chiron is ninth house of your paradigm, your worldview, your belief system. Okay, and it's also the house of teachers um, who, with Chiron there, who knows? Maybe you have teachers who are not, you're not sensing that they're confident in you, let's say. Okay, but if that's not the case for you, this Chiron in the ninth indicates that there is a belief system where you feel wounded, wrong, or not okay, and vulnerable with regards to the new birth or the new you, the new way of thinking, the new way of communicating that's emerging for you, okay? So that's going to come about during this month of October, but it's part of your growth process. There's a navigation that you are to step into here. Now, additionally, and importantly, with that Jupiter still in your fifth house and with that Chiron in the ninth house, it also indicates that as you move through these vulnerabilities, you're also moving into a space of becoming the teacher healer. So for a lot of you who aren't already in that space, who aren't already teaching in one way, shape or form, people teach in various ways, there is some creative expression that you are creating teaching methodologies or creative coursework or something that is activated for you. It just is. So whether you recognize it or not, there's something new emerging, something creative that is tapping you into some alignment of self that has to do with you becoming teacher healer. Again, that's Chiron Aries ninth house, the house of the teacher. And Chiron is the master teacher and healer. He's wounded, he's vulnerable, but he's skilled, okay? So you're, you're moving through that navigation of getting to that place of strength. That's part of a longer term process for you, but it's activated this month, especially with the Mars in that second house as we entered the cycle of October. So I hope that this was helpful for you, Leo. I send you much love and support for your month. You will find the links to in-depth clarity services to understand who you are, why you're here, what your patterns are, what the dynamics are, and what the inherent growth arcs are. What is your evolutionary process? What is the aligned career? What are the relationship patterns? And what is the other side of that? What's the freedom story? How do you get free into your alignment, right? So for those interested, you can find all those links below. All right, until next month, lots of love. Bye-bye.